explain pinstriping, yeah. Man, hard work. <laughs> It's just painting the brush, you know, it's not rocket science. But you just it's that repetitive and, and, and practice that that comes with it. You know, and, and a bit of confidence, you know, to be doing it in front of people and, and stuff like that. You know, it's it's a big ask for someone who hasn't done it before or, or is just learning. You know, everyone wants to see and watch because it's something that, you know, if you're not in in the hot rodding scene or, or part of um, the traditional stuff like that, you don't generally get to see it. Spare of the moment, I guess. I actually bought a set of pinstriping brushes and gave it a go, and man, whew, just chuck them away. I was like, this is crazy. And, uh, and probably a year into starting at Moselle Panel and Paint, uh, I asked my boss, he was coming back from SEMA, if he could bring me a little bit of paint. Airbrushing was just sort of taken off, and, and I didn't really want to jump on everyone's bandwagon, so I thought pinstriping would be pretty sweet. You know, I can outline my flame work and stuff like that. So he brought it back and um, I don't know, maybe a year later I was fairly confident at doing some, some designs on people's stuff. And I'm six foot four is not very the uh, not really the most generous size for a pinstriper or a letterer. Especially if you're doing a dash or, a, or something like that. Definitely some, some yoga moves going on. And especially being left-handed, even, even more of a pain in the ass. <laughs> Ever written on a whiteboard or a chalkboard before with your left hand? That's been around since day dot. You know, I'm sure that every design that I've done and someone else has done has been done a million times over, but it is, a, a fine line to make something your own without copying someone else's but sticking to uh, like the traditional or you know you have a bit of a new school wave coming in that is, is totally different again but it's still pinstriping you know there's you know you can only pull a brush so many different ways definitely an art form yeah 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 and you can tell you know jump on the net, everyone's got a different style. Man, you can tell different people's works, you know, I can tell local people work. I can tell you know, people that I follow's work straight away off a photo instantly. Oh, that's, you know, this guy's work. So, and that's cool, I think, you know, to take something that's so set in stone and keep it your own but the same. You know, you're not recreating the wheel. Yeah, but you've got your own spin on it. Man, I've been custom painting stuff since I was knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> now, there's no barriers, there's no limits. You know, there's not someone telling you you can't do that or, you, or don't do this, it's not going to work. You know, it's all trial and error and trial and error, and that, that, that's fun. You know? you know, even if it does go pear shaped, you know, you still learn something. You know, I've had helmets where I've come to the complete end of, of doing the artwork and peel the tape off and it, for some reason something's happened and it's peeled it off. Just wash it off and start again. It's part of it. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. At Classic Cover Insurance, agreed value means agreed value. No fish hooks. There's a lot of reasons why your hot rod or classic should be insured with Classic Cover. To find out more, Jump onto our website and see for yourself. Lettering's come on probably in the last year and a half, maybe year. Yep. And um, and and I'm building that up now. That's one of my main focuses this year is to really nut out lettering, get really fluent with it, you know, pick as many people's brains as I can and, um, and, and be as confident at lettering as I am striping. Yeah. Man, it's just, comp it's a whole nother ball game all together. I'm getting there, it's workout. Yeah, it's just, once again, hard work, 
repetition practice. Yeah, but lettering is, is really cool and it's it's something that it tells a story. You know, pinstriping's cool, but lettering you can read, people can notice, you know, associate it with something straight away instantly, you know, which is cool. And they tend to go hand in hand. It is a lot of trust, yeah, yeah. People have to drop the cars off, um, they have to leave them with me for, a, you know, it could be up to a week sometimes. And, you know, generally I don't get too much information, they just sort of leave it to me and, and, and say, whatever you think looks cool. <laughs> you know, and hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, what I think's cool is, is what they think's cool as well. You know? you know, not even I know what it's gonna look like in the end. It's a surprise for everyone. Yeah. It puts a fair bit of pressure on myself. To, you know, there's always that worry about, you know, if I'm trying something maybe a little bit different, you know, I always sort of think, oh man, I hope he likes this, you know, I hope this is going to be cool. So, um, yeah, and I think that's what makes someone like myself, you know, I, I actually care about them, you know, I, I don't just slap some lines on and, and kick you out the door, see you later, thanks very much. You know, each job is, they're all personal. I don't know, it's something, you know, you've got this beautiful car already, and then as soon as you put a bit of artwork on it, it just personalises it to them straight away, you know, like, whether they've built it or they've bought it, it's something that they've done to it, you know, and, and it's pretty cool because I get to help them out as well. You know, it may only take me a couple of hours, you see it drive down the road and it's like, wow, oh, that's so cool. You know, I did that, that's awesome.